Good man, how you been? Good, G. Good, good. We'll just pretty much roll straight into it, G. It's pretty crazy. Bit of a yarn. Yeah, Pump sure. tonight, G. We need a win, my brave. We need a win. Sick of losing. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's the goals going into tonight, G? What are we, what are we looking at? Nah, if, like as a forward pack, like we had a few meetings and stuff, but our sort of forwards... Um, Coach pretty much said just let the handbrakes off and just get into them from the get go, kind of thing, with the ball and without the ball. So they kind of ambushed us up there last time we played them. It was only about a month ago. So we wanted to do the same thing when they come down here. Um, the do rag on too, bus. Yeah, I've got my bloody braids and I normally have a nap, so I don't want to get them too messy for the game. <laughs> 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 um, I'm going to make a quick shout out to our sponsor, the Potty G, Arepa. Have you heard of Arepa? No, I can't say I have, bro. It's a, um, it's a pretty much a brain drink, G, for mental clarity when your brain's under fatigue and stress. The Hurricanes actually just partnered with them and the All Blacks are using it. In oh, stress. man. Yeah, because it's mean. It's um, created by neuroscientists, um, literally made to help your brain work when you start getting fatigued and stressed out. So like, is that like uh, back from back home? Huh? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. local oh, um, local business, bro. But it's exploded now, G. Like, I'm sure Stephen Adams uses it over in uh, um, NBA and that. Uh, but you can um, jump online and use the promo code one three eight, and you get twenty percent off. Um, or you click the link in the description, and we send you uh, send you a box over for jumping on the potty, G. Try sure, it. Huh? Is that a crack? Hold on. Um, what's what's uh what's the game day prep look like to you? you? Oh, t- <laughs> cruising. Today's or? been a bit. Nah, today's been a bit a uh, different one. I bloody um rolled into Captain Ryan yesterday to like get ready for the game, and I had a little little Susie boil on my shin. <laughs> 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 Hell, not sharing, man. bro. I don't know. Like I had a. I got like I got clipped in the game on the weekend on my shin, like pretty sore, and then it just got red, and then it wasn't that bad. And I woke up in the morning, didn't think anything of it, like didn't look at it, and then I went to go start stretching at training, and then the trainer's like, "Ooh, man, that's not good." <laughs> got a hold of the doc, skipped captain's run, went to go see the doc, and then had to go see the doc this morning as well. Um, yeah, so he popped it open, pushed some of the crap out. Gave me a couple of antibiotics so I can be swift to play, but on a normal, <laughs> on a normal day. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, on a normal day, I normally normally get up, bro, have a bit of a sleep until about eight, and then me and Chance, me and Nuck normally go um, do like a bit of a primer, go to the gym and hardly anything. It's just to get the body moving. Um, that normally takes about 40 minutes. We just do a bit of bench, a few chins, uh, box jumps. Uh, med ball throws, all sorts of different stuff just to get the body going. And we go bricky, come home, chuck some movies on, um, have about a maybe an hour nap max, and then start rolling into the game. Yeah, that's normally that. I don't really have a full set of what I want to do in a day, but that's I normally try and do that and then fill the rest of the day and however I like. User at home, user at home, eh? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any, um, any superstitions? Used to, I used to, I used to like wearing like the same uh, budgie songs, little speedos, the mouldy uh, ones I got from my first year I played. But nah, I just sort of run with rolls the punches. Sometimes I get my wrist strapped, sometimes I won't. I'm pretty pretty cruisy now. What's your What's your favorite um game to play in a year, G? If you could pick one, oh, probably with COVID and it going. If we could play back home against the Wild Wilds, would be me and her. Oh yeah, I yeah. was. Always keen to come back home and play in front of all the family and friends, but yeah, probably Penrith as well because I used to be, I grew up there with a couple of those boys, so it was always a good game. And they're obviously killing it this year, so in the last few years. Have you ever thought about um going to the Warriors? Yeah, there was a few of like chances or times where it's kind of popped up, but it's just been too late in negotiations when I'm already kind of sorted with the club before I came to the Raiders they jumped in pretty late um, 
but yeah, I was just sticky and gone for NRL. CEO down here done a lot for me to get get me be back registered in the NRL, so I sort of had to pay them by coming here. But I had already made my mind up to come down here as well, and like I said, like charms and them were here and I already knew them boys so it kind of made it easier coming to a club that I already knew a few boys here what was their situation to you you were talking about it um yeah oh, I haven't really spoke about it in a while I've kind of pushed it to the back but yeah I just got a bit carried away I guess I don't, I don't want to dive too much into details but yeah I just got like, I don't even know what happened bro I don't, actually like fully don't even know yeah oh it's it's hard because I Another obviously another player was involved, but I don't really like talking about his kind of stuff. But yeah, I just guess I got a bit too carried away with myself and um, got myself in the shit really. Um, yeah, I don't like because I don't like with the people that were involved. I don't want to drag them into it either, and they probably didn't do the things the right way as well. It ended up getting me in trouble, but I think. All of us that were kind of involved have kind of moved on now, so we don't really want to open it up too much. But yeah, it was Safe. it was pretty rough. Yeah, like oh, the aftermath of it, we pretty much got deregistered, and I was sort of yeah, pretty much just working as a landscaper and hoping that the NRL would over, overturn their their decision. Um, yeah, how was the head, bro? During that, Drew? Yeah, that was pretty rough. Like just talking to mum, pop, and that, like how disappointed and now where we're like you can kind of brush over it and it's just yourself or when you or your sort of family and like everyone's asking them questions back home or what's he doing silly bugger and all this it's just yeah it hurts more and everyone else is affected by it especially family well it's hard when but, um you know your 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 job is under the limelight eh? like yeah, the whole, yeah the whole world sees what you're up to so yeah you can't really get away with anything nowadays so yeah i like to say i've grown up and, and, and learned from it definitely and um, yeah, I guess I'm, I can say I'm definitely happy down here and, and I'll be a lot happier if we're winning, but that, that's all part of the process after we start matching up some wins together soon. Yeah, hard. Well, what I want to know, G, I was watching the game a couple of weeks ago. Or I seen the man uh, take his first kick. Was that um, <laughs> <laughs> was that planned or what the, what the fuck was going on there? <laughs> no. Yeah, well, we didn't have a kicker pretty much and like, they asked around, and I, I do a couple of like goal kicking sessions probably every month, just as just in case something like that yeah. happened. And luckily, oh. I was doing it. And two, because round one we had the young fella Schneider, and then he got COVID the following week. Um, oh. And oh. and the other one that would have been playing, but he was suspended, was Jordan Rafana, and he was he wasn't playing either. So we had a bit of a kickoff between me, um, that James Sheila. He was a rookie. They didn't really want to put the pressure on him. Um, and a couple of Hudson Young thought he could kick. Uh, Elliot Whitehead was like, Yeah, I have a crack, but <laughs> I was, I, I've kicked in 20s in reserve grade. Look, uh, I know it's a long time ago now, but yeah, I just said, Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Oh, back in 20s and yeah, reserve grade, oh, I kicked quite a bit, but I sort of stopped once I got to the thing because as soon as I got to Penrith, you had Nathan Clary that never misses, yeah, and then went to, to Bulldogs and um. Bruce Martin, who's over at Leeds now, he he hardly misses as well, so I don't really need the. But I still had a kick now and then, but nothing like what the kickers actually do these days. They kick pretty much after every field session during the yeah, week. Yeah. When yeah. when did you but, um when did you head over to Oz, bro? End of twenty thirteen, I would have been, I would have just turned eighteen that year, so I'd come over here with Chris Hemi. Uh, James Fish Harris, sorry. Um, you know, one of the other boys, but he ended up going home. But yeah, we came we came over together. He was a year younger, so he played SG Ball under eighteens and I went straight into twenties. Oh yeah. But, um, was that was that at the end of your year thirteen or you came over during your last year? No, nah, I had a year off. I had a year in Auckland. I was up north, uh at, at a could up north with mum and then I had a year off playing for point in Auckland, just under eighteens. Yeah. Um and then yeah, we played the Northern Swords for the uh, domestic comp prems. I was playing prems there, and then I think it was because James was killing it that they wanted him, but they had a few more spots left over. And because I was a bit older and they had a twenty spot, I just got dragged over. Really, like they never really saw me play, but yeah, hear me like James Fisher, He was making waves back home. The Warriors wanted him. Mm. I know there was a bit of interest in Union as well, but 
um, yeah, I'm glad he came over here because sometimes you can get into a bit of a stalemate there and go into the Warriors at a young age when you're kind of unknown. Yeah, yeah. But we've got him now. He's probably the he's in the top five at least, or top three front rows in yeah. the game right now. He's playing out, eh? What um, <laughs> he's playing then. What what the what do the deals sort of look like when they bring over the young fellas like that? In terms of like uh, not not money wise, but like what what is it like? What do they sort of yeah. put on the table? Um, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they got an allowance. Like I think it's how much was it? Six hundred a month. Um, and that kind of is to use to either cover rent and all the rest, and then they kind of help you find a job as well. So they don't just leave leave you out on the on the wings. But then if you're coming from back home or even like Queensland or something like that, they normally include in your deal um, two return flights, like back to where you're from, which definitely helps mm-hmm. obviously when you're moving away from family. And they cover obviously all your medical stuff, your insurance and like surgeries and stuff. So. Um, other than that, there's not much yeah, more. There's, it's kind of just, if you're good enough, they'll upgrade you or they'll keep signing you or you'll find somewhere else to go. But, you know, I was lucky I knuckled down in Penrith for a few years before I ended up uh, moving to the Dogs. Yeah, so how, how did that sort of go? Like, run me through your your run from when you got over there to actually cracking, like, your first NRL game. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember... Well, probably would have been like my second or third um, training session. Like no one obviously knew who we were. They they give opportunities to guys that are just playing club and that. So like everyone just assumed they're from here. So I had to go to training by myself. Where there was fish had the other bro to go. So I didn't know anyone, and I was sort of oh uh, yeah, a couple of leg swings, like getting ready for training and that. Like I was yeah, I've always been a pretty shy fellow until I kind of come here and had to open up a bit. But yeah, like I think. Because I was so keen to crack it, it never really phased me. I kind of just like was happy to sit in the in the shadows and just sort of grind and get to know it. But like footy back home or league back home to over here is just there's so much of a difference in structure, um, training drills, just everything. Like it's it's actually more detailed. There's a lot, there's a lot of I wouldn't say science. It's probably a bit far, but there's a lot of reason behind training drills. You're not just doing it to get warm. You're not just doing it to. Yeah. Say, say a footy player, everything's kind of kind of nutted down to a two way you do it. But yeah, I remember I rocked up to a training session. Like I was playing fullback for point the year before, but I always wanted to play in the forward. So I always wanted to play 30. And um, a fellow named Kerry Mosley played um, played a couple of NRL games in that. But he asked me what position I played, and I said back row. And I was uh, 87 kg, bloody. <laughs> Six four, a like six four one guy saying that he was a back row, skinnier than everyone else there. And I said back row, and he just kind of laughed in my face. And like it was, it was kind of disrespectful, but it wasn't like it's just because he didn't know who I was. So um, that's the that was probably my earliest memory from training was that. But yeah, first year played twenties, uh, had a few trials and that. Like kind of didn't know if I was going to be playing or not. Um, and then round one come around, and I. <laughs> One of our, um, I think Dallin was meant to play, but he ended up going up and playing, I think it was reserve grade or first grade straight up round one. And I ended up playing, playing fullback majority of the year in um, 20s, 2014. Um, yeah, I obviously wanted to play forward, but I just struggled to put weight on when I moved there. The heat, um, very anxiety, stressing out, like it's just too hard to put weight on. And, yeah. uh, and we're doing, obviously, Mahi during the day, we're doing all sorts of different jobs, labouring jobs. I was offensive for a bit. But, um, yeah, the first year was just chucked around. I, I did play a few games in the back row. I played played a bit of half, played a bit of centre. Oh, yeah. um, That's one thing about then, league, eh, is like it's way more interchangeable than union, eh? Like, yeah. You can yeah, play so many more positions than... Yeah, you know, yeah, if you're a first five or a half back in union, you play that and that's all you play, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a bit different. Union Union's like a real specialist sport, where there is league, you can kind of get away with being a you can, like I play center and then I'll end up playing front row and I I can yeah. play play them like it's pretty similar but not. But yeah, if you're a front rower in union, you can't play number eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whether you could probably do that in league, but yeah, then it's yeah, second year come around and had a pretty good we actually played the Warriors last round and we had to beat them to make the finals. And um, 
I, I didn't play the game, but Mason Lino kicked the conversion from the sideline to, to draw to tie it up, and they ended up going into the finals, and they ended up winning the whole comp for mate. Uh, and they had guys in there like Mason Lino, Albert Vete, Sam Lissone, um, so I think Offa, Offa was playing with Hickey Ogden. There's a lot of guys that have played great that have come through the Warriors system, but yeah, they, they were always stacked like back in the days. They were always the yeah. team to be, whether they didn't matter where they finished, as long as they made finals. Was that Ben Henry's year? Yeah. Nah, he was, he was a little bit older than me. It would have oh, been yeah. Tui Lolo here. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's sort of like the 93 babies and backwards. Sometimes you got guys that are like three years younger playing uh, 20s. But yeah, they ended up winning. They played Penrith in the final the year before. They ended up knocking us out the, yeah, that year. And then... Um, then we had we had a changeover and coach Cameron Serrato ended up taking us, who's the assistant coach out at Penrith now. And this guy is yeah, he's he's a freaky man when it comes to getting all his players and, and knowing what works for them and, and bringing a team together. We ended up I think we only lost about maybe four games the whole year and ended up winning the comp. But we now we had a stacked team back then. They didn't really know a lot of us, so I read I wrote a lot of names and I think there's about I think fifteen of us that are playing in Unero now from the like the one year. Cleary, like Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luai, Dylan Edwards, Tara May, Sione Couture, um, Kate Ellis, Corey Waddell, Moses Leota, Fisher Harris, me, Christian Croydon, Braden Burns. Um, uh, yeah, a few of the boys might get a bit eased that I forgot them, but yeah, we had a, <laughs> quite a few boys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, those are all the kind of like big money. Uh, they got Robert Jennings. Yeah, we oh, yeah. we had a yeah like back then we had probably Cleary and Robert Jennings were like the guys that you knew were always going to play first grade. But yeah, um, yeah I think Cam Sherrill does deserve a rap for uh, the amount of boys that have come through that that team in the year after and the way he sort of molded us as players. I don't think they'd be near as good as they are now if, if it wasn't for his sort of input and obviously Gus mm-hmm. getting a lot of us there. Yeah. Is he one of is, is he one of the best coaches you've probably had? Yeah, yeah, he's um, yeah, he, he's a little bit old school, but he he's like he's been he was under Anthony Griffin, who was a guy that debuted me. But he's I don't know, he's really good at sort of picking out stuff that like from different coaches that are, are good to hold on to, and then obviously he has his own stuff. But yeah, I, I don't know what he yeah I don't know how he does it, but he just has a knack of um. Unlocking some boys' potential that probably you wouldn't think would be playing twenties and end up coming in and killing it. So yeah, yeah, he yeah. I think a lot of even the boys out there now they'll they'll give him a rap of what he's been able to do with them. Have you ever had Wayne Bennett? Nah, nah, I've not. I've obviously heard stories about him and how he's a real players' coach. Um, yeah. And yeah, no one really says a bad thing about him. I might say he's a bit grumpy in that, but I think most coaches have that in their DNA you know, it's because it's quite yeah. stressful job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, fuck, I've heard I've, same thing, bro. I've heard so much about Wayne Bennett. Uh, my yeah. my mum's brother um, has played for the Warriors for ages, bro, and he had he had um, Bennett for a long time. And, bro, every time I talk to him about him, he's like, he's the best coach I've ever had, like, by far. Yeah, like I can see why a lot of people say that about him. Yeah. And he's still doing it to this day. He's a bloody dinosaur and he's still going. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you reckon he's going to do with that Dolphins team? I don't know, man. They've got, they need, a, obviously, every team needs a marquee player and they need someone to spine and they can kind of depend on. But at the moment, they're struggling to get names. Yeah. Um, I guess the, the chat around the town is Munster and Ponga at the moment. They're the ones that they've Really? Obviously, got it down to try and rip oh, They're the ones that they're really going after now, but oh, yeah. who knows if they'll actually get them. But yeah, I think they need to at least get one of those fellas, and then they're going to have to um, drag in some other veteran guys to sort of plug in the gaps in the um, in the spine. I think that's. I think yeah. I think they'll be fine if they if they can get a decent spine. I think most most teams you can kind of just sort of chuck together guys. But yeah, it's it's a bit different having like a team coming in here. It's, it's a bit of a weird one, eh? That's, so that's your what your nine, seven, six, and one. Is that your spine? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And and I know you, early on they went after Brandon Smith and guys like that, but yeah, oh, they just haven't oh, been yeah, able so to. Have, 
yeah, yeah. And even like huge drug news that went after him. But I don't know. I think it's just maybe they're not getting, maybe they're not getting out the, the whole bank check. Then maybe they just bring out half of it to get these guys on. That's sort of half yeah. I don't know. Oh, I actually don't know the ins and outs, but they're obviously not doing something right to, to get them. Um, who do you reckon is the best spine in the comp? You could pick one. Bang. Oh, it's hard to go past Penrith and form, man. Eh? Um, yeah. I like I like what the Sharks are doing. Like, I feel like Will Kennedy's he's grown. He grew last year, but even this year, you can show, see he's sort of matured more as a player. Um, obviously, Nick Hines is Definitely helped him out, and Moyes has started to play like his old self, like 2014, Matt Moylan, and um, yeah, I, I, I can, you know, got the the hookers down there as well, and, uh, Braley, but yeah, I think Penrith. I think everyone would kind of say Penrith. They're just very consistent, um, and even when they're playing bad, they seem to find a way to win games as well. So, um, yeah, what do you think yeah, that is probably, chemistry. Yeah, I think I think they like it's. Like, like I said, they've played together for ages, these guys that are yeah. out there. So they they just, like, and they've, a lot of them have come through, like, winning the 20s comp we did, and a couple of guys younger, like Croydon and Tor, they won an 18s comp together. So they just know how to win. Yeah. I, know, I think that's I think that's probably the best way to put it. They're, they're guys that have just come through a winning system and they just know what it takes. But, yeah, I think, obviously, Klez has matured in the last four years into, obviously, the best half in the game right now. So, Who's that and he's probably not playing... Uh, Cleary. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's probably not playing, he's probably playing at 90% with his shoulder as well, but because he's so experienced and, and how tough he is, he's, um, he's still being able to do a job for him. You're going to, yeah. I reckon it must be so tough. Um, probably not anymore because he's fucking, no, everyone knows he's the man now. But when mm. having your having your old man as the coach, and like people being like, oh, fuck, you know, his old man's the coach and shit, do you reckon, does that shit, do you reckon, affect? Them at the start, yeah, it would have. I reckon. I think when they first got him back, um, I think there was a few question marks about it. But I mean, fast forward what three or four years, they won a comp together, so you can kind of say it, it was worth it in the end. But there would have been a lot of relief off their back, I think. Like, yeah, last year they probably should have won it. Like, oh, I mean, the, the season before, but yeah. I think now that they've won a comp and they've obviously made the final of the year before, I think everyone can say it was probably the right decision. But mm. yeah, I'm happy for them out there, man. I remember, I was thinking I was out there for the, the grand final week and the parent was just pumping, man. Everyone would like walk around in their, in their pink panther shirts and waving their yeah. flags and that. Like just living there for like sort of four or five years and just seeing how happy everyone was. It was pretty cool to see, to be honest. How, how, how was the first grade going when you were there? Um, our first year twenties, they, I don't think they made finals, um, but they, I think Cle- Cleary was a, still the coach before he obviously went Tigers and come back. But they had like guys like Bryce Cartwright and they were playing. Um, Jamie, they bring Jamie Salvador over, uh, James Sigiaro, but yeah, they, they probably, oh, it might have been fifteen actually. I think fifteen they were in no good, but. 2014, they um, I think it might have been the year they beat the Roosters actually, but the next year they yeah they crumbled a bit. But yeah, well, I think that was sort of the beginning of when Gus came over and started buying like bringing guys in like Elijah Taylor and all that. So um, it was a bit of a big project, but I think he's had a hand in how it's all played out now as well. What what makes you say like, you know how you were saying heaps? Oh, everyone knew clear clear was going to make first grade when he was playing 20s and that what was it about him bro like if having played with him like what's it about having him at, at in the halves that makes it oh yeah he he had a mean kicking game from day dot I like when you because he was a year younger the year we won he was he had turned I think 17 or oh, he just turned 18 so like he he ended up coming up after the uh, SG ball season but I went to go watch a few of those games and bro, he was putting up like floaters, he was putting kicks in the corner, like on the button. Like he just he just kind of knew, like it was weird. I think everyone that kind of watched the play just knew, oh, he doesn't make it, something drastic's gonna have to happen to yeah. stop it. But he um and he's just like when I played it from the twenties to his probably second year first grade, he probably put on like four or five kgs too. So 
and even this year he's probably a bit heavier. Like he's not a he's not like he might look like it on TV, but he's not a small half anymore. From like to yeah. when I was when he debuted, he's probably from his debut year to this year he'd probably put on close to six kgs, I reckon, and just pure oh. muscle. So yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. Like it's yeah, I guess you kind of just had to experience the way he played to know that he was always going to play. Yeah, um, that's yeah. Another thing I he skipped. He's, yeah, he's. He skipped his reserve grade. Like he didn't play reserve grade. He went pretty much played twenties. Oh, played one. Yeah, he played one grade like game. Like just so he played against men, and then the next year he debuted against our oh, next game. He debuted against the Storm down there. Fuck. Yeah. So yeah, freaky man. It's, bro, I, I don't know what it is between um, union and league. Respectfully to all the union players that listen to this, but bro. League players are so much more stacked, bro. Like, I, like, just athlete physique wise, bro. I yeah. league just has bigger athletes, bro. Is it the way we train, or it must be different? Yeah, uh, but just, typically I'd say front rowers back in the day would have been massive, but I think with the game changing, you don't really have your sort of pouty. <laughs> oh, I don't really want to name names, but guys like. Back in the day, I'm talking like Mark Tuki, the Fitz of Paliocena for the Warriors, like big guys like that. You don't really have them running around anymore. The game's too fast. But I feel like there's, there's a few still running around now. But yeah, the, the modern day front rower to you could even say like five to 10 years ago, is, it's definitely changed. Like yeah. Fisher Harris, one of the best in the like, game right now, he's a 102 kgs front rower that probably could whack anyone if they ran it straight kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Whether it's guys back in they were like 130 and they just weren't ripped up. They were just, you know, they were their weight and you just sort of played with it. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, with the game changing and being fast, you, you, you can't really carry extra weight. So everyone's sort of stripping down to pretty much straight muscle or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, the game's too fast to, to carry extra weight now. That's probably the best way to put it in the way the, the hierarchy and the NRL are going. They're only trying to make it faster. So it's going to slowly become a little man's sport. Hopefully it doesn't, but at the, the way it's going right now, it's, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, t- pre-season's tougher than the actual games. Like, I think everyone would say that. And that's just to get yourself ready for it. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's not getting any easier. It's pre-season, <laughs> just a shitload of running, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we had a bit of a changeover and stuff this year when it comes to the running stuff. But when I first got down here last preseason before this one, there was like a lot of long stuff, like just sort of just getting oh, yeah. K's in your legs. Where there is now, it's a lot of high speed. Like there's no junk K's, I'd probably say, where you're just running. They've got you trying to run at 75, 80% of your yeah. your max speed for long, like for periods of time to sort of condition yourself for the game this year. Um, but yeah, it's just, if you don't make <laughs> Probably the hardest thing is if you don't make finals, you've got probably 12 weeks of it. Like you got six weeks before Chrissy and you got six uh, weeks after before trials. So if you're winning comps and you're playing good footy in the year, you don't have to worry about that. But because we yeah, didn't make finals last year, we had a pretty big preseason this year around. But yeah, it's not, oh yeah, everywhere you go, it's hard. It, it, everyone has their own different ways of doing it. But yeah, the demands of the game this day and age, it's. Yeah, it's just getting harder. I feel like that's what's really going to cut down guys on career spans is because preseason is just some <laughs> some demons, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck, I've heard I hear from everyone, bro. Yeah. It's like yeah. It not puts the boys off, but fuck, everyone dreads the preseason period. <laughs> yeah, but you got to do it. Like, you can't can't be a half ass about it. You, you want to yeah. do it, though, because you know you have a good, good season if you go out and took most of the days off. Yeah. Do you um do you guys have any sort of fitness tests? Um, they do do the Bronco. Or we call it like the twenty forty sixty or Bronco one point two. Yep. Um, but they're not too. That's kind of just like a baseline. They just want to sort of see where guys come back at. Um, but they have got like a, it's like a it's got like a beep test similar, but it's like a yeah it's a variation of it. But that yeah that one was pretty tough. And it's oh, just yeah, like yeah. it yeah. You, you run, yeah, pretty much, yeah, yo-yo test, but it's just like a, it's not just like there and back, you got to like go through, like it's like a three-line grid where you got to get to a different line on a beat. 
So you might go like oh. up to the end, up back, up to the end, and then back to the middle before like the last beat kind of thing. And it just variates, like it's just a variation of it. So sure. yeah, and that was that was pretty tough. Yeah, and that's probably one that they they kept like do it at the beginning and then go halfway through, see where the boys are sitting, and then do it just before trials start to yeah. make sure no one's getting any worse and everyone's getting better. Who um who runs the best brony at the Raiders? And what does he run? Who was it this year? Last year was Sebastian Chris. He killed preseason last year. Um, what did he run? He would have four thirty uh, around about. I reckon our fastest one would have been around like a four thirty. Maybe a four twenty. Nah, it would have been a four thirty. I reckon. I reckon it would have been a four thirty. Uh, don't ask me how what I run nowadays. <laughs> I'm a forward now. I'm, I'm claiming that I'm not trying to run I'm a forward now. <laughs> <laughs> have you um have you ever played union? Yeah, no, I grew up playing it. Um, I just always wanted to play league, but yeah, up until sixteen, I was pretty much union all the way through school and that. Especially up north, they don't really have league, so we had to play union. Yeah, yeah. Cody, too. Fuck, everyone up there plays not union. Yeah, uh, be a yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they weren't. Um, yeah, mum mom was, mom, mom was always Warriors, bro. I don't know what, like, I don't know if it was Pop got it into her, but yeah, it was because of mum I wanted to play league. Oh, yeah. Have you, yeah, um, nice, yeah. you ever been hit up by any union teams? Nah, no, like at school and that, we like they had like those sort of blues camps and stuff, and there was an opportunity to go to Japan, but I was real like I just wanted to go for the sort of union experience and see if I was good enough to. Like, those guys were freaks, eh? Oh, yeah. I think at the camp, the guys over there were like the good views from up north, from Cole Cole. Yeah. And Silly, I think Silly was the only other one that was, yeah, Silly Asi Bunavali was, was at that blues camp as well, but yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, oh, yeah. Those guys are athletes, though. Like when you come from a little skinny boy from up north with no coaching to guys that have been and like brought from Fiji for the sole purpose of playing union. And <laughs> yeah, no, no thanks, fella. I'll go back. I'll go back up north. <laughs> Would you, if you got the, if you got a gig in union at some point in your career, do you reckon you'd ever take it? Oh yeah, I, I've actually thought about it. Like the game, like it's. I like I can't stand uh, I can't stand watching Aussie rugby a eh? but back home and <laughs> and like the domestic comp back home I'm like bro that'd be me yeah, like guys like with like guys like Rene Ranger and that like especially for the for the Cody oh, like Sam honey. Sam Nock and Sam Nock and like Tom Robinson I played against Tom Robinson like as a kid as well oh. played against the good Hughes. so like it's pretty cool seeing guys like that crack it eh? yeah yeah like yeah. stick solid and 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 make a make a Risk of it. What do you reckon you'd play? I've got an idea of what I thought, think you'd play if you were. Oh, <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to say midfield, but I'd probably maybe loose. I don't know. Yeah, because how heavy I'm, are you? 100, in between 100 and 105. I fluctuate quite a bit. Fuck, I reckon you'd be a. Yeah, I'd say, I would have said Lucy. I reckon. Uh, yeah, I'll maybe like a blind side. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm fit enough to be seven, but <laughs> fuck, they run, eh? Holy. They, uh, they get some from, they get through, through some mahi, bro. Holy. Seven and your nine, bro. Those are your, those are the ones that get through all the mahi, bro. Fuck. Yeah, uh, they they cover a lot of free, a lot of uh, precious materials. Fuck yeah. When are you um when you off contract? Nah, I've just res- I resigned. The week of our first game, so I'm here to ninety. Oh, sorry, not ninety. Oh, two thousand twenty-four at the latest. No, twenty-five at the uh, at the earliest. Sorry, so I've got a player option, but three, four, yeah, twenty-three, four, five. I've signed for, but I've got an option for six. So pretty much, including this year, five more years, four more years. Fucking hell! Congrats, bro. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Nah. It's a it's a good spot down here, man. Got a good yeah. crew, good coaching staff. Just need to, like I said, yeah. the place is always everywhere you go when it comes to a team sport. The place is always more bubbly when you're winning. So we just need to get that part right. 
how old are you at the moment? Uh, 27 next month. So would, would, the, would the wires be on the card at the end of that period? Possibly. Like, you've got guys like Larry and that did the same thing. They would have been a bit older, but... Yeah, I've, I've always thought of it. Like, I'd, I'd love to finish up back home, but in saying that, I've got, like, a couple of mates over in England that are sort of enjoying, like, that kind of lifestyle and travelling in as well. So I, I don't think I could do anything out, to be honest. But, yeah, I don't know if by the end of this deal, I don't think... Um, I think my body will be a bit, be a bit bust, busted up to to keep playing over here and like at a real high level. But yeah. like the kids, yeah, kids these days are just getting stronger, faster, fitter. More bro, the powerful, game's gone so. so young, bro. I was we were talking about this the other day, watching it, like how common it is to hear boys that are like eighteen, nineteen years old playing. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> yeah, thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> No, I talk about it all the time too. We've got guys like coming in the training with us that are like 2003, 2002, and I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> wow, yeah. bro. And it felt like, it felt like, like not so long ago was my debut here and everyone was saying, oh, you're only young. Not anymore, my bro. <laughs> Fuck, bro, you're still young, G. 27, 26. Fuck, you're still got ages, bro. Yeah, that's that's actually what we skipped out on your your um your debut. Forgot to. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was buzzy. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was a weird one. Like we played, I think it was round four, but. Sorry. Um. Yeah, no, it would have been two thousand and seventeen, round four, but like round three we. I think I played, I was playing, obviously playing cup at the time, but there was a few injuries from the week before and they were just like, I don't know if they were going to play or not. And then midweek we had, it was only reserve grade training at the facility. And then Cam Serraldo, uh, he was the assistant coach for grade then. He came kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, oh, coach wants to talk to you. And I was, all the boys were there too. So they were like, oh, debuting, debuting. And I was just like, <laughs> wet with like full red and that. And I was like, oh, I walked out. And then, yeah went into his office and he's like, oh, got some pretty good news. I'm going to play you this week. And I was just like, speechless, eh? Just like sitting there like, wow, oh, right, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, everyone sort of saying, like, why don't you, it, it, it takes ages for it to settle in, but obviously run an old lady and that straight away, all the family and that to get him over here for the game. But um, it ended up, like, the, the day of the game ended up falling up on mum's birthday. So, like, Everyone that really knows me, I'm the biggest mummy's boy. So I was just like two oh, birds, one stone. Like my debut, mum's like sort of dream for me, kind of just like landed together. We ended up winning. Um, but yeah, that whole week, bro, I probably would have ate four or five times, didn't sleep at all. It was just like, it was just like a big deal, eh? Yeah. It was just like, yeah, I would have waited. did they tell like, you? Well, they, they had to make sure that the other guys weren't playing for it. So it was like midweek. And I think it was like a Sunday Arvo game or maybe a Saturday Arvo game. So I would have found out like on the Wednesday or Tuesday. Yeah. Once they ruled out the other boys. And the other boy, it was actually ended up being Fish. Fisher Harris was one of the ones that was ruled out for me to play. Oh, shit. Um, we ended up playing together eventually. But yeah, I just remember that whole week. I was just like, I couldn't eat couldn't sleep. I was just like constantly on the phone to family and friends and yeah, it was, it was just, yeah. I ended up coming off of cramp like with probably 10, 15 minutes into the second half and couldn't go back on because oh, I just it had, had no energy, eh? Like, well, we ended up winning the game quite quite comfortably. We beat them like, played Newcastle it was like 40-something nil or 40-something to six. Scored a try like it was just like, it was like a dream, bro. It was one of those, like everyone was well. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So, like, it's like, it's just like a dream. Like, the whole <laughs> week was just a dream. Dream day. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, so, it was just, yeah. We, family went over to the to the Leagues Club after, had a few beers. Like, it was just, like, the whole day was just me. Like, caught up with mum and them in the morning before the game. Yeah, it was just, a, yeah, it was a buzzy old year, 2017. So, how many, how many uh, games are down now in our... Uh... Tonight would be 99, I think. Holy fuck. 
Yeah. Big handy next week. Holy shit. Yeah. I was looking at it the other week because I know it was getting close. I, I, yeah. So, yeah, that's another one. Oh, that's one. timing, bro. This just <laughs> fucking now timing. Congrats, G. Holy shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, I know. Took, took the long route. We got in trouble a few times, but we're there now. Fuck. No, not many people can say they played 100 NRL games, bro. That is fucking Yeah, crazy. hard. Yeah, it's crazy. But the buzzy thing about it is I played against... um. James like Fisher Harris on his hundredth game when I was down here, and then I'll be playing against him next weekend for the high, my hundredth game. So it's just like weird. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's freaky, oh, eh? It's fuck. like the coincidence and everything. It's just like wow. Well, it's actually talking about this to someone yesterday, bro. Um, like how people used to say, like you know, the universe and shit. And I used to be like, fuck. All right, bro. Like. Now I'm almost like, fuck, bro. <laughs> this shit happens way too much to be a coincidence. Bro. Yeah, like, yeah. Stuff just 100%. happens, bro. Fuck. If no um, one controls it. It just falls in place. Straight up. Do you do any of the boys play um play fantasy? Ah, uh, nah. Because well, we're not technically we're kind of not meant to. But I think a few of the boys muck around with it more yeah. just to see how. What their value is, not really to play the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, not really. I, I used to play it earlier on, but I haven't touched it for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, bro, we've got some a few questions here. Wrap it up, Chief, with some people on, yeah, on the gram. Uh, let you go. Game day. Bro. <clears throat> um, with Raiders giving you a lifeline, what changes in life have you made to be a better person? Um, Kind of just stop putting myself first, day, eh? Like, like in that kind of respect. Um, no, not too many people, but I've got a little fella. So, like, for him to see out, like, grow up, and he's going to obviously see those and realise what his old man did one day. I was just like, I can't keep, like, kind of putting that kind of stain on our name, I guess, and I want him to kind of be proud of what I've done instead of... And see that I've turned the corner, post it. Like, I haven't kept the same trends and doing the same stupid things, though, so... Yeah, I just want to repay the, the club as well. Like it's that's why I resigned. Like they've they've done a lot for me, so it's only right that I kind of repay them by hanging around a bit longer. How old's your boy? Ah, uh, four. Yeah, he's, uh, true. Dang. He's a good looking kid. I'm still not sure if he's mine. <laughs> 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 Everyone always asks me, I'm like, bro, come on, bro. He looks like <laughs> me, but he's just a better version. <laughs> He scucks ass, bro, straight up. But here's a tough one. Hung you or boil up? <laughs> Put a bow for me. Um, oh, really? I can't pick it. I lost it. Oh, well. <laughs> That's actually hard on. I don't think I'll do the more simple. I'll probably, I'll probably say boil up because you can get hung here. You can't really get a decent boil up here. You can't get too high and, and the right stuff. So I'll probably say boil up. Boil up. Who's who's the better player out of you and Ash? <laughs> bro, I don't know. That's my older brother, but well, I'm still like I still haven't really had a chance to play against him, but I'm still kind of like terrified of him because he's my older brother. I don't know. He could still snap guys in half now. So yeah, I'll probably still say him defensively, and I'll probably say I've probably got him covered for a bit of toe and, and a bit of flair off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> um the best was North Hook Younger or South Hook Younger? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm going to say North because if I say South, they're all my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, all the Maoris the coming place, out with the question. Definitely South. Yeah, hard. <laughs> like, this isn't even a question. Some girl just says, sexy man bun bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I knew who that was. Freaking hell. <laughs> I'll tell you after. <laughs> um, oh, heaps of people saying, no question, proud of you and, and stuff like that. Um, re- representative honours still chasing, question mark. 100%. Um, obviously, the World Cup was meant to be last year, but they've pushed it this to year. this year. And, but they've named the like an extent. Yeah, they named an extended squad last year, but yeah, well, these probably guys playing better than me at the moment that I've got to sort of start up in the ante if I want to be in the squad. But yeah, we'll cup at dinner there, be keen as. Me. 
What was it like playing under Pryor's wing back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this cheeky fella keeps popping up. Um, bro, he, bro, he was in our club, armor. bro. <laughs> he was actually a gun back in the day. If he stuck with league, bro, he would be playing now. I'll True. keep telling him that, but he was, um, yeah, he was lucky. He reminded like when I played with him and growing up, he reminded me of like Kevin Locke. He was just fast, bro, and he was always in the right place at the right time when it comes to line breaks. Bro, don't say that but, about Pryor, bro. We're not going to hear the end of that shit. <laughs> but on the flip side of that, the bro can't handle his piss either, so. <laughs> <laughs> You guys yeah. always get in trouble with fucking Tony when we go up. True. Um, what what was the transition like from NZ footy to Oz footy? Oh, just learning. I think if you're yeah, you got to come over. You got to come over here with a pretty open mind because there's there is reasons you do everything like I said before. So yeah, it's just it's a different game altogether. You don't play with. You can play at what's in front of you, but there's always structures to get to that point. Whether it's back home, it's just if you see a gap, brother, run at it. If you mm. want to chip chase, do it back home. It's sort of you kind of try to break down a team before you get your plays on. Yeah, it's a weird one, but yeah. True, right. Your last one here is um, favorite person to room with. Favorite. Ooh. And we'll go worst so too. Oh, I've got a few worse. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away, I'll chuck Moses Leota and Fisher Harris because they're the worst snorers I've ever come across. <laughs> I used to live with, um, obviously, used to live with Fish when I first moved over. And if I didn't go to sleep before him, I wasn't going to sleep, so I'd just oh. jump on the couch and try and crash. Oh, sorry, Jake, carry on. No, you're right. Um, yeah, those fellows are the worst snorers, so they'd be up there. Um, <laughs> I don't think I when I I've proved with Joe Tufts a couple of times. I don't think I've ever seen him use a toothbrush, so I chuck him in there. Oh. But the bit <laughs> a pup, I, my probably favourites would probably be out of Papa. Papa is pretty good. Like he's just a crack up dude to talk to. Um, oh, yeah. Always laughing, always happy, and Charles is like a he's a husband, bro. He always love him from he used to cook all the time, clean. So, yeah, I'll chuck him in there. And Trey Mooney, me and him, you know, he's one of the young kids coming through here. Um, he, he, me and him just got on pretty well. So, probably them three and then the other, other fellas would be the worst. <laughs> <laughs> his old, um, his chance of an OCD fella. No, I wouldn't say OCD, but he's just like, he's a real caring dude. So, like, he, he doesn't just think about himself. He thinks about others around him as well, so... That's yeah, right. but if I swung that if I swung that way, I'd be trying to get that fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, ladies. <laughs> if if or if or <laughs> big if. <laughs> I I'll um I better let you go, G. Game you got a big game tonight, G, but um Thanks for jumping on, bro. Honestly, appreciate your time. All the best tonight, bro. And um, I'll suss out your Eddie in there after this. Get you a box of that Ade Pass sent over so you can give it a crack. Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, just, thanks for having me. And, bro, loving what you're doing at the moment, eh? So keep it up, my bro. Mean, bro. We'll, we'll get that kit over too, still, when that gets, yeah. when it's finished. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Cheers, bro. Mean, brother.